Hello everybody and welcome back to the DCAC channel where we once again solve a lead code question in Python. So let's see something swap salary. Hmm. And that sounds easy. I don't know why. Self-dividing numbers. Now that sounds something. So seven to eight self-dividing numbers. A self-dividing number is a number that is divisible by every digit it contains. Hmm, that is interesting. For example, 128 is a self-dividing number because um, you can divide it by 1, you can divide it by 2, you can divide it by 8. Also, a self-dividing number is not allowed to contain the digit 0. That is also interesting. Yeah, because you cannot divide by 0, I guess. <laughs> um, Given a lower and upper number bound, output a list of every possible self-dividing number, including the bounds, if possible. Okay, left, right, and then you just go. And you know that uh, everything below 10, of course, will be self-dividing because it only contains the number, one number, and that number itself is a yeah, and the same number that you're going to be dividing by, so yeah. Uh, and what more? Let's see the boundaries or our constraints. The boundaries for each input arguments are left is at least one and at most 10,000. Okay, so for 10,000 entries, we are talking some computation. I mean, for 10,000 entries, we would, for the very last one, we would basically be checking, well, 9999, right? The very last one would be 9999. So we will be checking four times. And in that case, you'd ac actually be checking only um, once because uh, all the other ones are repeating themselves. Um, what could we do? We could actually start by when we have, well, let's, let's start firstly for um, number in range and then our range would be, the start would be left, then it would be right plus one. So we want to include the very last element. Uh, and let's see, uh, we know that if the number contains a zero, we should exclude it. How to best achieve that? Um, I guess what we should do, um, everything containing a zero, for example, the 10 would contain a zero, right? The 20 would contain a zero. The 50 would contain a zero. The 100 would contain a zero. 110, 120, everything divisible by 10. Um, that means, let's see actually. Yeah, yeah, everything, well, not exactly, because this is not divisible, at least with, without a rest by 10, right? Uh, I don't want to be, yeah, yeah, that's for sure not going to be divisible by 10 like this. So what do we do? Um, let's first have a list. Uh, let's see. Digits would be, so we get all the digits out of each of those numbers. And that would be number. List out of if we make a string out of our number and uh, if we get the string, we actually want a list. Um, how do we get that as a list? Uh, would that even work? I guess I'm, I'm gonna quickly check that so we have uh, print a list out of a string out of a number and it's probably also a better way to do it but right now and um, 
four. And of course, we, don't, we wouldn't even have it as a list actually, but as a set. So this would uh, make something like this appear without any duplicates, I guess. Uh, and yeah, it would definitely help us. And um, let's see. Hmm. Four digit in digits. If digit um, would actually, I would do this, and then would also do something like uh, with just having the set of a list containing zero subtracted. So we actually get rid of the zero. It should be this in this case. Uh, mm. Let's see. Did I get this right? I guess I didn't. Um, set. Oh, I see. Uh, this should have been something like this, I guess, right? Yes. Um, because we are dealing with strings so far for each of those digits. So if integer out of this digit. Um, now, uh, if our number divisible by the integer out of each of those digits, according to, to our explanation here, right? We're going for each digit and we're checking our initial number against that digit. And if we see that it is divisible without any um, residual, then um, this, this um, goes for our case uh, and we also want to have something like let's have a flag it would be true and um, yeah and only if we get something that is not according to our criteria we would have the flag pose so at the end we actually know that for each digit we checked the rest division and if we didn't ever get a flag false um, we would still have our flag true, right? So if that is the case, um, if flag equals true, we should be having an out, basically output and that would be an empty array and in this case we would append our number and that should be it more or less because we will be looping through all of the numbers in our range we would be getting the digits as a set of strings uh, and we will be checking for each of those digits the division uh, while converting them back to strings so it works and yes, in the end, if our flag still holds, that means we didn't uh, run into any problem. Our condition uh, or the requirement stands so we can append this number. And yeah, uh, let's just return the output. Now, the only issue I have right now is actually more about runtime. And I will think about runtime in a second. I just wanted to see what we have for now. Sorry, should have been digit. So, interesting. One and twenty two would say, Oh, I see. Um, of course, we didn't skip all of them. Okay, uh, there should be another way for us to actually remove everything containing zeros. And I would basically just keep it as is. And I would say if digit 
and digit is a string right now. Uh, I'm not sure because uh, I'm kind of thinking in pandas right now. Python string contains contains substring. Um, hmm. Yes. Let's see in. Sure. Um, so if we know that zero is in our digit, we can basically skip this iteration and uh, we can continue for only, basically we can we cannot go here and actually do our checks only for digits that do not contain the zero. A few moments later. Very interesting. Uh, actually, we don't want to continue, we want to break. I'm sorry guys. Uh, and we are actually going to be setting flag to false. Um, and since both of them are more or less the same condition or they execute the same code, we're going to be doing this and just delete this. So either we find a, a zero digit or our number is not divisible um, without rest, without uh, any uh, residue, residual numbers. Uh, and in this case, we can break our algorithm. So let's see, one, 22. And accepted. Can we do something to improve our runtime? Now let's think about runtime complexity. We are running uh, across the whole range of numbers that we are given and that is that is something we cannot skip. So we are doing n uh, in the in the length in the uh, depending on on the size of the range and for each of those digits for each of those numbers actually we are going through yeah through its digit length or yeah the number of decimal places it has and the number of decimal places uh, a number a, a given number has rises log logarithmically uh, well actually not yeah logarithmically but with a different base uh, the base 10 because we are we are working with numbers of base 10 so basically we are having and this is happening here because we are looping through each digit so the amount of digits will rise with time depending on what our range like maximum range is and this rise is on a log logarithmic scale of base 10 so we have n times logarithmic uh, base 10 that would be our, our runtime complexity which is actually not bad at all it's very close to, to linear um, linear progression but um, don't quote me on that actually just just look at the graph uh, when it comes to logarithmic um, progression with base 10 and our space complexity would be basically yeah we are not even creating uh, the whole range here like we are only working with one element at a time and for each of these elements we are creating another list that contains the the yeah the, the different numbers the digits of that element so basically uh, this would be a constant more or less and like one integer and this would be a list that could be in the size of how many uh, different yeah, digits a number has so basically log n again just log n space complexity um, in the yeah, in the, on, on, in the base 10 and our output again kind of difficult to kind, kind of judge but I mean in worst case it would be n digits so uh, n numbers so all the numbers in the range get put there but um, again this is like n plus log n so I, so I guess our yeah we, we could say n plus log n but I don't even think that that's how how complexity is uh, stated so I, I guess it would be n because the n would be the bigger number in this case um, 
but maybe I'm wrong. Uh, please correct me on that. So yeah, this is our solution. Let's see if we can actually submit it because I'm still kind of worried about runtime. Uh, but yeah, I guess lead code doesn't have a problem with that. And yeah, it took a bit of bickering or like kind of like going around circle, uh, circles, but I think it's an actually a pretty easy uh, algorithm, something that I'm actually very accustomed in thinking about when it comes to kind of like nested loops. Um, it's very fun. It's a very fun problem. And I, I actually really liked it. I always like those uh, module related issues or problems. So yeah, I hope it was, I hope it was um, educational and kind of fun for you guys. Um, try it yourself and yeah, see you next time. Bye bye.